Well, here we are. Here's your spacesuit, Burdock. Get into it. Let's get to the ship. Mm, I see you're all ready. Yeah, all but the face piece. You know, sometimes I get the impression you don't enjoy riding in a driller. Let the funny stuff. Let's get out of here. How do we know Corey didn't send a space phone message before he got out of his ship? You're right, Grove. But before we leave, I'm going to set a magnesium bomb and leave it in here. What for? I'll make sure that this drill is useless to anybody else. And it'll leave this cab in such a mess that the space patrol can't find any fingerprints. All right. All right, but let's get at it. There's something up ahead, sir. Looks like smoke. You're right, Happy. It's the drilling machine that's on fire. It's not moving. Hey, do you suppose whoever was in it got out? Well, let's hope so. Uh, wait a minute. By the color of the smoke, that must be magnesium. It must have been deliberately started to wreck the control mechanism. But where's the driver? Uh, take a look at that scorched area on the ground a few yards from the driller. A blast-off scar. Uh-huh. Our driller operator had a spaceship hidden here. Turn on the viewscope, Happy. Maybe you can pick up a trace of him. Now contact Space Control Solaria. Commander Corey aboard Terra 5 calling Space Control Solaria. Commander Corey calling Space Control Solaria. This is Space Control Solaria, Commander. Lieutenant R.S. speaking. Lieutenant, relay this bulletin to all Mercury Space Patrol units. Yes, sir. A spaceship of unknown type just blasted off from the vicinity of the broken water conduit. Interrogate all space-borne private craft. Ground all suspicious ships and hold the occupants. I'll relay that message, Commander. Can you give any sort of description of the ship? No, we merely saw the blast-off scar. Looked like it was from a small space cruiser. That water main break was deliberately sabotaged. An atomic driller did the job. Atomic driller? Yes. We found it abandoned near the break. Tell Colonel Henderson I want investigators sent out to examine it. They'll need firefighting equipment. Yes, sir. Make an immediate check of all known atomic drilling machines on Mercury. Where they are and who has them. Yes, Commander. How's the water situation in Solaria? It's even more serious than we thought, sir. We're setting up cargo ships to bring some in from other cities. Oh, uh, Commander, a venus bond passenger ship reported seeing a wrecked lab ship south of Solaria. The pilot thought it might be Professor Mallison's ship. South of Solaria? How far south? Fifteen D.O., sir. That's the hottest part of the planet. Even if the ship wasn't badly damaged by the crash, it looks bad for Mallison. The same passenger ship also picked up Mallison's automatic coat, sir. And another temperature report. 122 degrees below zero. Below zero? That seems impossible. Have you sent any units to investigate? Not yet, sir. Colonel Henderson... Uh, Yes, I know. You've got problems of your own, Lieutenant. Give me the location of that crashed ship. I'll investigate it myself. And 87 degrees, 16 minutes, 43 seconds west. Good I suppose that's a ship you shot down? Shut up, Iris. I got their frequencies, both of them. Got it, Lieutenant. One more thing, Commander. The passenger ship pilot isn't sure, but he thought he saw something moving near the crashed ship. It doesn't seem likely. No, it doesn't. But I'll get there as quickly as I can. Corey out. Corey alive? Yeah. It was somebody else we ran over with the driller. Cut it off. So that is the first ship you shot down, and there's someone still alive. There couldn't be. That was four days ago. And even in the best space suit, mate, nobody could live four days in that heat. What are we going to do? We're going to make sure. Maybe we can get there before Corey does. And if not, we'll cut Corey's investigation short. Murdoch, maybe we didn't kill those men with the driller. Maybe it was Corey and somebody else, and they escaped somehow. Well, if he did, he wouldn't escape this time. You marked down those coordinates, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, they're right here. All right. I'll take the controls. You get on the view scope. We don't want to get close to another ship. Especially Corey's. We're nearly to the location, sir. Drop her down a few thousand feet, Hap. Yes, sir. Yeah, this part of Mercury looks even worse than where we were before. Rougher terrain. Yes, and it's even hotter. Close to 500 degrees. Now, listen. Get that down, Hap. Yes, sir. MLS 28. Mercury Lab Ship 28. That's Mallison's identification code. Temperature minus 122 degrees. Hey, it cut out. Minus 122 degrees. I got a fix in that signal, Happy. It's almost directly below us. Look. It's a cracked up ship, all right. A lab job, too. Get your spacesuit on, Happy. Yes, sir. Whatever we do, we've got to do it fast. Hey, Commander, down there by that cliff, it's a man in a spacesuit. That's incredible. He's waving to us. Stand by for repeller ray. That's a lab ship, all right. Even in the viewscope, you can see it's pretty badly smashed up. Yeah. But we're too late. Corey's ship is landing right near it. What do we do? He'll probably go in to find what's left of Mellison. When he does, we'll swoop down and bless the wreckage. And then shoot up Terrify. Better not get so low, Burdock. They may see us. There is 
not much they can do about it. Anyway, I'm keeping between them and the sun. Nobody's going to look up at the sun, especially here on Mercury. Wait a minute. They're running right past the ship. Where are they going? Oh, maybe. Seeing something close to the cliff. Well, I... It's a man. And he's alive. After four days in the blessed furnace down there, it's impossible. See for yourself. Uh, must be Mellis. We've got to make sure that none of them get out of here. Get your space suit on, Grove. We aren't going to land. Not unless we have to. But I'm going to make sure that all three of them are finished before we leave here. Check your suit's spacer phone, Happy. That's working okay, sir. And so's the temperature control. And we'll need it. All right, open the outer hatch. Allison's acting pretty strange, sir. He just stands over there and motions to us instead of coming toward us. It's hardly a normal way to greet rescuers. Let's see if the spacesuit transmitter is working. Professor Mallison, this is Commander Corey. Can you read me? He's just waving more excited than ever. Professor, if you hear me, hold both hands over your head. He's doing it. Apparently he can hear us, but his transmitter's out. I thought I heard something in the earphones just for a second and another voice. Professor, is there some reason why you want us to come over there? If there is, hold your hands straight out at your sides. Yeah, that's what he wants us to do. We better do as he asks. How did he manage to survive in this heat? Commander, it's a cave. Yeah, I see. Commander, can you hear me now? Oh, yes, Professor. My space phone wasn't working, so I couldn't answer you. Commander, you've got to look at this. It's a happy surprise to find you alive, Professor. That spacesuit must be remarkably resistant to heat. It isn't the suit that's responsible. Just look in here, where the beam from my atomo light is shining. It just looks like an ordinary cave. Further back, look at the walls. You mean that shiny blue-black mineral? Commander, that's ice. Ice? Ice. In this part of Mercury? Right. Thousands of tons of it, perhaps millions. And that's how you manage to stay alive. It's cool in the cave. Yes, with 570 degrees outside, inside it's a constant 122 below zero. And your automatic rocket transmitter was right. Commander, do you realize what this underground ice means to Mercury? To the people of Solaria in particular? You mentioned millions of tons. A conservative estimate. Think how easily it could be melted and piped to Solaria. Only a matter of a few miles in comparison with the present haul of more than a thousand. It certainly is a timely discovery. Dozens of conduits can be built from here to Solaria at a fraction of the cost of the one line that was broken. A spaceship? Yeah, it must be a space patrol craft. Let's get to our ship, Professor. Believe me, this news will be welcome in Solaria. Well, what I don't understand is how all this ice could be underground in the hot part of Mercury. The rock above insulates it. This is not a new phenomenon by any means. Why, on the planet Earth, more than a thousand years ago, Indians in the Arizona desert used to get ice from a natural cavern such as this. Hey, wait a minute. That's not a space patrol ship. It's a private cruiser. You're right, sir. It's taxiing around on repeller ray. I've seen that ship before. Why, it's the one that shot my lab ship down. Are you sure? I'm positive. Hey, what's a crazy fool doing? He's backing the ship right toward the cave. You better get out of here or he'll run over us. He's got something worse than that in mind. He's seen us and doesn't want us to get out. Well, maybe he's just backing up to get room to blast off between here and the opposite wall of the canyon. Up in your life. Quickly, get out of the cave. He's going to put his stern in here and turn on his rocket blast. It's lucky we saw him in time to get out of the cave. Now get behind this rock. Maybe he won't see us from the ship. You're right, Commander. He's pushing the tail of his ship back in the cave with blasts from his forward rocket. Really intends to see that we don't get away from here. But keep close to the rock. I think we'll be safe here. Hey. He's keeping his forward rockets on to hold the ship in the cave. Something tells me he's going to regret this. Wow. The ship's wrecked. He shot right across the canyon into the opposite wall. His hand must have slipped off the controls. No, Happy. The heat from his rocket exhaust turned the ice into steam, and it popped the ship out of the cave like a cork. We'd better get over there, Commander. They may be badly hurt. If they haven't got spacesuits on, they haven't a chance. Commander, I see somebody getting out. Yeah, there are two of them. And they do have spacesuits on. Let's get them. By their attitude, I don't think we'll have any trouble. No, sir. You know, uh, during the last few minutes, sir, I, I really realized what a wonderful thing water is. That's so? Yes, sir. In the form of ice, it saved Professor Mallison's life. And when those two fellows turned it into steam, it uh, simply cooked their goose. <laughs> <laughs> An exciting preview of next week's new Space Patrol adventure after this important question. Have you sent for your Space Patrol space phone yet? You better hurry! hurry.
Yes, sir, this sensational offer is soon going to end. And you don't want to be left without one of these thrilling new spacophone sets, do you? No, siree. So, hurry! hurry! More fun. You can talk back and forth on the spacophone to someone a straight 50 feet away. Just like talking on the telephone. Complete with two spacophones, 50 feet of communication cord, and secret briefing sheet. Now remember, these are official spacophones, made especially for you on Earth. Real beauties, too. Gleaming blue and yellow plastic. Look exactly like the spacephones Buzz Corey and the gang use. So don't wait a single day. Hurry! Hurry! Yes, sir, you have to hurry, because this offer soon comes to an end. To get the complete Space Patrol Spaceophone set, do this. Buy a box of Instant Ralston. Then, with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and an Instant Ralston box top to Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in continental U.S. and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Missouri. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have just entered a spaceship in Neptune City spaceport in search of a traitor against the United Planets. They pause in the open hatch a moment. He may be up forward, tampering with the controls. Wrong guess, gentlemen. Uh, Commander, look out! Here we are, cadet. <laughs> I've got a ray gun. Yeah, well, I've got a... Oh, I warned you. Oh. Carter, put down that gun. Don't try to get to your feet, Commander. What are you doing in this ship? Preparing it for its last voyage. <laughs> There's an explosive hidden aboard. Time to go off two hours after blastoff. And you, my friend, <laughs> will be aboard. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Queen of Space. Boys and girls, this is your commander. Do you know how life-giving oxygen is carried to the cells of the body? By the bloodstream. So when a person loses a great deal of blood in an accident or in sickness, there's not enough blood left to do that job. Result? The person dies. So will you help me save lives by joining the Space Patrol Blood Boosters? It's fun, it's patriotic. So join the Space Patrol Blood Boosters today. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Ken Mayer and Norman Jolly. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol. And be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. Space Patrol comes to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.